into the country of open spaces. innovation and productivity. Where big ideas are born every day and new technologies are perfected. Where the impossible becomes real. Every sunrise inspires the extraordinary. Welcome to the country of open spaces, open hearts, and open minds. Together, we can do amazing things. Shout out to uh, New Zealand Tourism who created that very professionally made video and uh, they've basically opened it out to people like me who, create, who were putting in bids for conferences for New Zealand for us to use as part of the marketing material. It was pretty great, pretty good. <laughs> oh. What can we say? Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to the speakers for your fantastic presentations, the mini-conf organisers and the work that you put into creating your own mini-conferences. Oh yeah. <laughs> when we were announced in Perth, I stood up here and said, party at our place. Come and have a party at our place. You have. And I have to say, you have been fantastic party friends. You have behaved very, very well indeed, and you would be welcome to come to a party at our place any time again. <laughs> just not all of you at the same time. Um, I just want to say, um, if you'll have seen our speaker's gifts, are these beautiful 
handcrafted silver fern pins. They're, awesome. They're beautiful, aren't they? They're versions of this one that I was uh, given by Tourism New Zealand. They, uh, it's a group of three ladies in Nelson who made them for us. Uh, now, what I wanted to say, I've had a couple of people asking me what they are and what it means. The silver fern has been used as a symbol uh, for New Zealand, particularly for sports, for quite a long time. It's a native fern. Uh, the whole point of it is that it's a beautiful uh, bright green on the top of it, and when you flip it over, it's actually this lovely silvery colour that reflects the moonlight. And the Maori used to use it as markers for when they were travelling around. They just bend one backwards and they could see their way around. And you actually wear it, we can't quite see it properly, but if you see any silver firm image, you'll see that you wear it kind of on a bit of an angle going up. But please do wear it with pride, they are beautiful, and we hope that you remember us by and with them. One last time, I've got to give them a shout out, because without their investment, I don't think we'd have had as big a party. I know you wouldn't have had as much in your swag bags. And you know they're an important part of our open source community. So our Emperor sponsors this year have been Catalyst. They've been terrific. And I hope a number of you are going to go along to their beer o'clock after we wrap this evening. I just hope there's enough room. <laughs> uh, HP, once again, been outstanding. <laughs> and the team there providing the Chromebooks we've been using on Rego Desk all week, which uh, some lucky participants are taking home with them today. <laughs> <You too. laughs> IBM, again, ongoing support. PDNS last night. All the sponsors, sorry, this is hard now, came and said how great we were to them. They gave us money to make this happen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> King sponsors this year. Anchor, what a team. 19 of them attending the conference this year. That is awesome. And the... The ITS department at the university has just gone beyond our expectations. They have been outstanding. Both Red Hat and Google once again participating heavily in the program, backing us financially, providing us with assistance. Please give a big shout out to them. OSS. Local company, strong investment in open source, big team here this week, and our lanyard sponsor for 2015. In addition to the two sponsors, Internet NZ and the Python Software Foundation of our, of our diversity and outreach program, I just want to make a special thank you to Lana Brindley, Ellen Strickland, Brenda Wallace, Laura Bell, Nick Coglin, all of whom participated in the selection process for the uh, funding program, and I couldn't have got through this without all your help. Who liked the ice creams on Wednesday? Yeah. Who didn't? <laughs> Elasticsearch, thank you so much for making that happen. That was something a little bit special that we were able to put on with your help. Tim and the team from Suze for providing some uh, gifts and also helping with the beers later this evening at Catalyst. Uh, a special thank you to Graham, uh, I've got to, I'm trying to pronounce his surname, Gately, Gately, see in from Roofing Industries, our fairy sponsor, he turned around to me last night and said, it was an extra 500 bucks on the ticket, and why doesn't everybody sponsor at a fairy level? <laughs> and Geek Zone, one of our local media sponsors who helped get word out. Um, a number of organizations that we as a team are members of, have helped by providing time, assistance, to get through 
this conference. Uh, Chillfish in particular around the design aspects, Cherie from Open Media, Amanda from Beagle, and Mark from Icons. The AV team have been outstanding. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but next day video on Tim, Tim's videos. You know, we're investing in the future of AV for Linux Conf AU, but this team have just been outstanding all week. Thank them so much. You all got chocolate in your bags. You all got some great coffee. You all got great swag, and there's an amazing prize for our raffle. Please thank these suppliers and sponsors. <laughs> so to the prize, the fundraising. Fundraising. Okay. I'd like to invite Robin up from Cystic Fibrosis uh, in New Zealand. She's come along to... Um, to accept Joel, how much money? Where are you? I've got it here. You've got it here? So, at last count, we've raised $7,880 for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Nearly eight thousand dollars worth of raffle tickets here. So, Vic, where are you? Well, do you want to do a few words and then we'll do the yeah, draw? Yeah, Robin. Okay. Um, on behalf of um, both National Cystic Fibrosis New Zealand, who are based in Christchurch, and the local branch Auckland, which is where I'm from, and we're just down the road in Grafton. Um, thank you very much for your generosity. It's amazing. Um, Cherie spoke to you earlier in the week and explained to you a little bit about cystic fibrosis. Um, I have a 21-year-old son, um, six foot two, probably looks like any of those young guys in this audience. Um, as a university student, was diagnosed at the age of four weeks. Somebody asked me today, you know, what's it like not to have CF? He doesn't know. He's lived with it all his life. Um, the money you've raised is going to go to National. Um, they're going to put some of it towards research. And our other aim is to try and help People in hospital, um, Vaughan had four admissions last year, which is average for someone of his age. A short stay is two weeks. Um, he's a student, so he can cope with missing a few lectures. But a lot of our adults are working, um, so you know, trying to explain eight weeks sick leave, annual leave to your boss. Most of them don't have a holiday. They use their leave up that way. The other thing that's really difficult for them is most of them go to Auckland Hospital or Christchurch Hospitals, and hospitals don't have Wi-Fi. So they spend two weeks in a room by themselves because of cross-infection. People with CF don't socialise together. They meet people on Facebook and that sort of thing, but they never ever meet or socialise with someone else with CF, which is hard. But if you imagine two weeks without Wi-Fi, Facebook, Twitter, access to a laptop if you've got one, if you can borrow one from a friend. Um, it is hard. Um, we go through quite a bit of money as a parent on the tea sticks and walking across the road with their cell phone so that we're pushing them in a wheelchair if they're not very well to access internet. So some of the money I'm hoping is going to go towards those things that just make quality of life um, a lot better for when they're in hospital because they want to stay in contact with their friends. They don't want people to know they're in hospital often. They want to live, lead that secret life. And just being able to access the internet is a marvellous thing. So thank you, and I hope whoever wins that 3D printer. It looks amazing. They're pretty amazing, aren't they? So thank you very much again on behalf of the CFNZ. One last thing before Vic makes the draw is that Diamond Age have said for the month of January, any purchases of their Mako 3D printers, they will give 10% towards cystic fibrosis. It's <laughs> a big box. Is there one in there? <laughs> one ticket. Boom. All right. And it's a Ooh. green ticket. 
It's a green ticket with a letter A on it, followed by the number 13. We have a name. We, we, we have a name as well, but Can you'll you have to it? read it because my eyesight is poked. Mm. John Runzi. Are you here? Congratulations, sir. You're welcome to have this one, but um, if you're overseas, we'll happily crank one up and send it to you. He is based in New Zealand, and so come and see us later and we'll arrange the shipment and everything for you. Congratulations. One last aspect of our fundraising has been the 15 Trees Carbon Offset Program. So uh, we're working with a team that have worked historically with LCA in the past, uh, but the money raised this year is being used as part of a program here in New Zealand. Uh, thanks to those of you who, who came on board, uh, we've made, got 114 donations, so that's... Um, more trees. More trees, yay, more trees. <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, provide an update on the website, etc. once we've uh, passed that on to them and they discuss what they're going to do with that program. But uh, thank you so much for being involved with our carbon offset program this year. Thank you. Now we need a Rusty. Oh, come on, Rusty. Okay. Um, Uh, <laughs> green, huh? Yeah. Okay. Um, should we get the uh, existing rusty wrenches out on stage? No. No. Okay. Thanks, guys. Very supporting. Thank you. Okay. So um, the Rusty Wrench Award is an award for services to the Australian um, open source community. It's really about somebody who jumps in and just does things. Um, hence the wrench. Um, it has a tradition of falling apart as soon as you pick it up, which encourages you to get involved and fix things <laughs> yourselves. Yeah. So, um, we had a number of strong nominations this year, once again, um, and it was selected by the previous year's um, winners. And I'm happy to say that Steve Walsh has won this year. Most of you know that Steve just generally spends the entire conference hidden in the knock, making the networking work. Um, he uh, particularly is... Well done. Uh, no, he fixed it. Yeah, he fixed it. There you go. <laughs> and he fixed the Rusty Wrench Award. So. Um, I am honestly completely gobsmacked. I don't consider myself a rock star. I consider myself a roadie. I show up, I set it up, I go out the back, I drink scotch, like I did last night, as you can tell by my voice. <laughs> then I pack it up and ship it to the next city. But it's not just me. There's other people helping me do this, so this is a thanks to those that do it. So that's Julian DeMarchi and Mike Beattie on the admin team. And now comes the long list. <laughs> um, yep. Stuart Young and Kim Horton from 2008, John Dalton and Peter Lawler from 2009, Ian Beasley from 2010, LT from 2012, Ariana from 2013, and Mark Tell from 2014. They're all people that are there with me at 4am doing the work, helping me you know, get this together. Um, 
to me, this is as much their award as it is mine. But um, yeah, um, you've actually seen me speechless. So thank you very much. <laughs> This year, oops, am I off? Am I on? This year we didn't even let him in the knock. He got a year <laughs> off. <laughs> so what next? Where next? What's going to happen? Oh come on! It's not like you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Let me get this set up. <laughs> oh. Do we want Josh for this? Yeah. <laughs> I, let me get it set up. This on? I'm sorry. I'm not sure where my cue was, so I'm just going to step up and steal the stage. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, because you're shy and retiring like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so 2016 is included next year, but before then, we're actually looking now two years ahead uh, as uh, a group and a community. So this year, we will, as uh, so Linux Australia, will receive bids for 2018. So if it's not clear by now, Linux Conference is ran by volunteers uh, who uh, put their hand up to organise in a different city every year, and it roams around. And the process of this is that bids are submitted to the Linux Australia Council, who review them and then select based off various criteria. So if you're interested in running a, a Linux conference, uh, if you've seen how much work it is, you might be turned off, but if you talk to Steve and Cherie, I'm sure they'll tell you how much fun it is and how rewarding it is as well. Ask me next week. <laughs> <laughs> Give them a week off. Uh, then start thinking about it now and keep subscribed to our announce list or our general chat list because that's where we'll uh, communicate some more information such as the process for bidding. So this year we will take bids for, for 2018. Last year we took bids for 2017. <laughs> Yet. Which we will announce later, apparently. You want to yeah, just after. Conference. After this. Okay. So now we'd like to introduce you to your team for 2016. Please take the stage. So, for those of you who don't know me, I'm David Bell, um, Comrade Chair for 2016. And I'm Debbie Reed, I'll be David's opinion. Uh, I'm in the US. <laughs> um, Someone needs to push oh. the slides. So, Athlete. Auckland was pretty awesome, right? Yeah! yeah. No, Kathy? Kathy? No, no, that's the clicker. That's the clicker. You need to oh, share them all. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what a clicker was by now, wouldn't you? I really didn't hear you. Let's give a great clap to Cherie and Steve and all of the Red Shirt volunteers. And we're going to see you all again next year, right? <laughs> yes. And we want to as well. <laughs> so. 2016 will be in Geelong. Where's Geelong? Geelong is about an hour southwest of Melbourne. Um, for those, those of you who went to Ballarat, that's located in the top left of our map. Um, it's an hour from Melbourne Airport as well. We'll be running shuttle buses for those of you flying in. Um, it's also 20 minutes from Avalon Airport uh, for those of you coming from Sydney. Are there any hills in Geelong? <laughs> Geelong is much flatter than Auckland. <laughs> in the uh, local Aboriginal, Geelong means cliff. Um, please don't walk off it, you'll get a bit wet. <laughs> um, so our venue is Deakin University Waterfront Campus. Is that the one that's like a block from the beach? Uh, <laughs> it's across the road from the beach. <laughs> um, our keynote venue is Costa Hall. It's a 1500 seat uh, converted old wool store. Um, it's a great space. 
Our accommodation will be using the student residences at the Warm Ponds campus. It's a 15 minute bus ride away. Um, we'll be running continual shuttle buses. Um, we're also working with our local uh, conference bureau, Business Events Geelong, to provide a range of accommodation options within the Geelong CBD. So I can like totally have a four star hotel with fluffy pillows. Mm. <laughs> On your own budget. <laughs> Um, when is it? It's the 8th of February <laughs> until the 12th of February 2016. That is only 387 days away. These dates are subject to final confirmation though, and we'll let you know when that happens. Um, call for papers will open the 1st of June. Um, find Michael Still and Michael Davies, um, give them your ideas, talk to them about the process. Bribe They're them. there to help you. Um, Rego will also be announced in due time. Um, so our theme is Life is Better with Linux. We want to hear about your humanitarian projects, how you're helping people um, live their lives fully, um, and things like Internet of Things projects and how you're using free and open source software like that. Um, we've got four fantastic keynotes already confirmed or in very serious discussion. Um, we're aiming for two female and two male um, presenters. <laughs> and we hope to have a great range of topics. Um, Geelong also has lots of coffee shops, pubs, a beach, shopping centres, um, hundreds of eateries, and great wineries as well. There's lots to do and see. Sorry, David. I've just had 1999 on the phone. They want their dead tree brochures back. Just as well, we're from the slightly closer past, and we have, from 2008, NFC key tags for you all today as our promo. Um, they're unlocked, we want you to hack them, do things with them, build things to use them with, um, and let us know the awesome things you're doing. Um, if the volleys who've got them can start handing them out, that'd be awesome if you haven't already. <laughs> um, so if you need more info, you can find us at our website, lcabythebay.org.au. We'll also take over the linux.conf.au domain at some point. Um, we're going to <laughs> beat up Cherie for the Twitter account. Um, you can use the hashtag LCA2016. Find Lower us case. on Facebook as well. I think Lower we have case. a Google Plus page. Um, and join the announce list as well for more info um, on the LA mailing list server. Um, so that's it for Geelong 2016, 8th to the 12th of February. Um, we really hope to see you there. Behind LCA, awesome. <laughs> thank you. Behind LCA and behind some of the fantastic presentations you've seen over the last five days, are two incredibly wonderful people who put together a wonderful program. And uh, I'd like to invite Michael Davies to the stage to uh, encourage you to submit to the CFP. See you all in about 387 days. <laughs> So, who here has submitted a patch to a piece of software that runs on a free software or open source software operating system? Hands up. Now, how many of you have had that patch merged? And that's pretty good. If you look around the room, you see that most of you have made a contribution to open source software. That is fantastic. But you know what? It's not just software that can be patched. You know, that this conference can be patched as well. You can submit a patch to LCA 2016. And the way that you do that is that on the 1st of June, when the CFP opens, you put a paper in. You see, this week I've been going around and talking to a lot of you people, and guess what? A lot of you are doing cool things. But probably 90% of you who are here today have never spoken at an LCA. Now, I get that, right? Getting up and speaking in front of people can be scary. We get that. But you know what, there's plenty of videos on YouTube and we've had talks on the conference site before helping you being able to uh, speak and uh, to learn how to uh, give your talk at the conference. So just like a patch, sometimes you submit a patch and it's rejected, isn't it? And they say, go back and do some rework. They say sometimes, rebase that patch, base it on something new. And sometimes it gets rejected. Now, 
if you're the sort of person who can't speak at all at a conference, then get someone else to put something into the CFP. You know, if you know someone who's doing something cool in the open source community, get them to put in a submission to the CFP and, you know, perhaps we'll see you in 2016. But a lot of you who are doing cool things, maybe 2016 is the year when you can come and speak at this conference. We've got great speakers, and we've had great speakers this year, but I'd like to see some fresh faces. I'd like to see some new speakers. I'd like to hear about what you're doing in the community. So on the 1st of June, when the CFP opens, we would love to see you put in a talk proposal for LCA 2016. And uh, with that in mind, I, I now would like to invite Rusty Russell to come up onto uh, stage again, and this time he's uh, going to speak on behalf of the speakers. Hopefully. So there's a kind of a, a LCA tradition that was started back at Calo um, that uh, the speakers um, pass a hat around and we buy a small token gift uh, to the lead organisers. And this year, thank you. Um, <laughs> we thought you would appreciate a. Uh, Nice about Policella. Oh. And uh, yeah. a gift card for three hundred dollars more of whatever grog you uh, <laughs> I'm sure. Right. <laughs> they know us too well. Awesome. So thank you for the speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. I must admit I'm getting fed up with soda water. <laughs> thank you, that's awesome. Now. Now. Now's your turn. Hang on, right. hang on. Now, now we're doing 2017. I have a clicker. Yeah, we go. Oh. I'm just going to see what's on the next slide. Nothing for no. me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, a bit of confusion. I thought I was doing this beforehand, so I apologise. So LCA 2017, not sure how they're going to follow the Geelong presentation, but I think they're kind of set up. And if you go to lca2017.org.au, sorry, no, just .org, no AU. Uh, you might find their website there. And so I'm pleased to announce that for 2017, LCA will be returning to Hobart. And, it, and with the directors of Chris and Craig, if they want to just wave or show their hands, feel free to chat them up if you have any ideas or want to help out. But uh, I'll give it back to you. Thank you. Congratulations. That's awesome. I didn't make it to Hobart last time. I might, uh, might volunteer again, but then I've been told off of volunteering too much. Just yeah. passed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's that noisy yak. Right, Mark. Mark? So, Mark's the other you know, key person of this team because he's been running our AV and NOC and Mark been our fantastic. standby person if either of us are in any point incapacitated, like having to rush my daughter to the hospital on the Saturday because of a <coughs> sprain, not a break, thankfully, so things move on. But what we want to share with you are a few interesting numbers from this week. Wonderful thing with having Mark doing that is anything that is like vaguely has the words AV in it, I don't want to know. It's his. So we were privileged enough to be sitting on uh, the University of Auckland Wi-Fi this week. They uh, gave us our own SID and carved off a piece of their network, but it was all their gear. And uh, generally the feedback was pretty good. What do you guys think? Was the Wi-Fi pretty good at the conference? So, so this morning I uh, pinged a quick email through to the uh, IT people and in their busy day they managed to pull some information for me. So this, um, I guess is for the first four days of this week anyway, shows us that we typically had a peak count of about 650 odd devices connected to our SID. Um, I found it most interesting we had devices connected that were not authenticated, so <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. That's actually lower than we expected. Yes, I was expecting all of you to bring like four devices and I warned the university that we would want like, you know, 3,000 devices connected and they were like, yeah, it's fine. 
<laughs> they, they comfortably tell us they deal with ten times that many. Uh, so this was traffic, and I, I, I had to ask them what it meant because it was a little ambiguous, but uh, it looks like we managed to do about nine gigabytes of download at the left side there. Um, I don't know what the time period is, it's a little bit vague on the bottom, but um, uh, congratulations guys, you didn't kill the university network. Thank you very much. <laughs> So we're going to give you a few extra numbers. Any idea what this one is? Coffee. coffee. <laughs> exactly. That's the number of coffees the team managed to serve to you over the course of this week. <laughs> and it was good coffee. Three more numbers. Any guesses? This one's not that difficult. <laughs> Talk about it. No, no, actually. We were lucky. <laughs> No arrests and very, very few calls on our on-call phone, which is really impressive. We had nine participants across our keynote and plenary sessions. We had 13 mini-coms as part of our program and 89 talks or tutorials in the main program. That doesn't include mini comp sessions, it doesn't include lightning talks. Just think about the scale of this event. That's really something special. <coughs> Any ideas on this? No, it's a little bit more personal. We've got uh, eight years since the first LCA that Steve and I attended, which was in Sydney. And I still wake up hearing, good morning, freedom lovers. <laughs> Uh, 450 is the number of days since we discovered that we had won the bid for LCA. That was... <clears throat> they actually waited until, literally just waited until we had wound up OSDC in 2013 and uh, Francois took us aside pretty much as hot off the stage and told us, which was, and then said, don't say anything. The great big grin. <laughs> Um, 715 is the number of days since the LCA 2015 BOF in Canberra that I attended and spoke to some of you good people who had done it before and you still didn't put me off. That's when I made the decision that we're definitely going to go ahead and put this on for you. So that's how long it takes to put this thing on. So now our thank yous, because there's so many people to thank, aside from the people we've already uh, made mention of. Everybody who was involved with our keynote and plenary sessions, uh, Michael Davies for helping us get Eben, uh, Bob Young for coming along on his own dime, um, B. Dale for helping with today's session, and the participants in our plenary yesterday. That's been incredible. Please, can everybody who has spoken in a main session or in a mini comp session please stand up? A big decision for 2015 was, this is a five-day conference. We opened the conference on Monday. The mini comps are part of the program. Yeah. From, from our point of view, we simply provided the venue. The presenters here, it's you that everybody else paid to come and see. So thank you so much. We had a lot of help. Our ghosts. Our previous organisers who've helped us, who've done hangouts and Skype and phone calls and spent considerable time over cups of coffee 
in Sydney, in Wellington, in Auckland and all kinds of other places helping us through this process. Um, the Papers Committee, headed up by Michael and Michael, uh, I think we had 17 people on the committee, was it this year? Something like that. It's a long process, I have a completely different appreciation of the conference programme and I thank you both for everything you've done. I uh, want to make a special mention here uh, to a man who has already been on the stage, that is Mr. Walsh, Mr. Steve Walsh. Uh, unknown to many of you, because you know we did manage to keep him out of the knock all week. Um, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have had AV, because at very short notice I was able to ring him up and say, I need a detailed inventory of everything in the LCA store with a dollar value attached so I can get it through customs and I need it in two days time. <laughs> so, big thank you sir, you did an awesome job. And, and random side point, Customs in New Zealand held the shipment and we all held our breaths and uh, I had planned a meeting of all the volunteers and this took them weeks and I managed to get them all into one place to uh, unpack everything and test everything on Saturday. Customs released the goods and they were delivered at 4.15pm on the Friday. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right, now I get to plug my own company, which is really unusual. Um, I need to recognise my employer because, uh, and I, this, this slide was, this, I, this logo was accidentally missed off some of the earlier acknowledgements, so I've got to give my boss a bit of... Compensation. Um, we get our boardroom back now uh, because uh, during the planning phase of this conference for basically about a year solid uh, there was always a little piece of LCA in our boardroom. Uh, on a fortnightly basis at least uh, we were in there scheming and planning and um, eating. Uh, eating, yes, <laughs> and um, cleaning up afterward. Um, uh, not only that, uh, our office just happens to be only a few hundred metres up the road and we were able to stage a lot of our equipment there waiting for the university to give us some space to actually put our stuff. Uh, so I need to give a real big thanks to my employer, Icons with Visions, um, the entity formerly known as just Icons, uh, for uh, all the support that they gave and apart from anything else they actually uh, kept me on the payroll while I was here this week, which, to which I'm really grateful, so thank you guys. Right, now, um, the IT Services Department, University of Auckland, um, I know we mentioned them already, um, they went on the books as a sponsor, but really um, they were a lot more for us. When we approached um, the university, uh, obviously this is a pretty swanky venue, uh, it was pretty awesome, but when we approached them and, and, and told them about what we wanted to achieve and, and how LCA has a peculiar set of requirements in the technical sense uh, when it comes to conferencing, uh, they weren't scared. They uh, grabbed it with both hands and they gave us a member of their team basically full time to act as a liaison between the university and um, Linux Australia, which was bloody awesome. Uh, Steve Shipway, who's not here, sadly, uh, because his family dragged him away on holiday overseas. So despite the fact he spent nine months <laughs> working on LCA, he's not here. Uh, but in his absence, I would like to acknowledge all the work that he and the team from uh, ITS did to help us out this week. There's a, there's a stack of other names. There's a guy named Reed who's kindly stepped up when Steve disappeared, who's been our guy and looked after us very well. A bunch of the guys in network design were able to pony up with a, a, a network on their network but not on their network uh, with, our, with wired connectivity and wireless connectivity and uh, uh, we managed to monkey with all their display stuff and not break it too much. So yeah, real cool stuff. Thank you guys. Oh, sure. um, yeah, we do need to definitely make mention, oh, yes. as yes. I've said before, uh, Kate McLennan from Auckland University, who's been our, uh, our go-to person. Anything and everything that's happened at the university, we've had one point of contact which has just made my life and everyone else's life so much easier. Problems come to me, I give them to her, they go away. So if you're thinking about it, if you've got a university that has uh, an events team, it definitely is worthwhile being really, really, really nice to them.
<laughs> yes, Kate, Kate's been really helpful. And I should give a special mention, because I didn't mention them before. There's a group here in this building called um, the Learning Environment Support Unit, or, or LESU or something. Uh, and they actually run the AV kit. And um, we've bugged them many times this week over audio issues. Uh, and they've been nothing but as helpful as they could be. So yeah, yeah we've had a lot of support from Auckland University. Uh, big ups to them. All right, so this is when I get to talk a little about the guys that I've been working with pretty closely over the last um, couple of weeks. Um, I've got a special mention, I know we, we don't tend to drop names too often, but I need to specially mention f five people. Um, Ryan, Tim, Carl, Leon, Michael and Matt. Is that six? I can't count. Um, <laughs> it's been a long uh, week. So those guys are, I mean, you'll know many of them, people like Ryan Werner and Tim Ansell who've been around the world and done the AV thing for, for Linux uh, conferences for a long time. But those guys came to Auckland a week early and did a, did a special hack fest, uh, House of a Catalyst. Uh, and uh, they put together the high def stuff, which has turned out pretty cool. So thanks for that. And um, them and the wider team, and it is a huge team, uh, have managed to keep you all heard keep you all recorded, uh, keep the network running. Um, oh, do I stand up now? Do I stand up now? No, no, we'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I need to specially mention those. Um, and I, the note I wrote here was set up, fix, improvise, ad lib, tr translate, panda, explain, shrug, and move on. <laughs> So some previous years we've tried to drop a mirror on the local network with the way the university is connected, we don't need to because we got uh, the fastest link you can imagine into our local peering point and from there we can get to Slingshot's mirrors. So they always mirror the LCA videos, for the, so for those of you in New Zealand this is where you can go to. They'll also be up on the LA Mirror as well. So all the videos will be made available there, and many of them are already going up online on YouTube. And I want to give a, a special mention to Nick Clifford for setting this up for us in all of about a day. Um, so uh, yeah, well done, and thanks to uh, Call Plus and Slingshot for doing this for us. It's really appreciated. So our team. They've been with us from through the long haul. They've done all those meetings in ICON's office, at OSS's office, and various other locations around the city while we scoped out where we're going to run these events, how we're going to use the venue. How it's going to work. How it's going to work, what, what will like, work. What colour t-shirts we're going to have. Oh, the arguments about the t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of time, energy, the amount of unpaid leave that's currently being taken by them just so they can look after you this week is really something special. So thank you to our team. I, now, I get to do this, don't I? Can I get to do yep. this? Yeah, okay, I can do this. If I'd like every single person who volunteered to cover AV, to cover Rego, and to run rooms. So stand up, please. Even if you haven't got a red shirt on, I want you all stand off. Up. In addition, please stay standing up. In addition to that, they had to cover driving for our partners program, they helped bring speakers in from the airport, and they've just been terrific. They've been awesome. C can I ask you to remain standing, please? If you didn't know you were going to be a volunteer until you got here on Monday. <laughs> Seriously, I'll get you all, can I, I just want to recognise those who didn't know they were volunteering for us until they got here. I know there's a few of you. If, you, if the volunteers could Everyone stay else standing. Sit down. Everyone else sit down. If you got co-opted. On you, Monday. Well, you can or stay. this week. <laughs> there's a few of you. No, there's, there's a few, a few there. there. A few there. <laughs> These guys are great. You can 
sit down. Ready? Mm -hmm. So, we do want to wish Geelong the very, very best of luck. Have fun. Please take this with you. Be awesome. That's it. It's all yours. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> I, Steve and Cherie have done an absolutely fantastic job. And as I keep saying, it's organised by volunteers, uh, volunteers from the organising team and the volunteers that just stood up. But I'd like to actually like invite all the people who are involved in the organising throughout the year to come down the front, please. Oh, there you are, come on. Come on. There's more. There, there's more Come on, and the rest. I, Shane. There's, there's definitely a lot more Everyone, than that. There, there's still people there's out the back doing there. more things. I know there's people helping pack up and bump out already. There's, there's a constant Lisa, job. come on. <laughs> it's amazing how you can sometimes not spot someone in a red shirt. That's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> so, it's uh, very, very sad that... Uh, LCA has to come to an end. I don't know if I'd have the energy for it to go for 365 days, but I think I'd have fun of trying. <laughs> Nevertheless, thank you. Still doesn't say enough. <laughs> Enjoy your time in Auckland for those of you who are staying with us. I hope you've enjoyed your week with us. The train we, trip down to Wellington? Yeah, we hope you, those of you enjoying the train to Wellington tomorrow make it to the station on time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Safe travels to all of you. And we look forward to joining as many of you as possible in Geelong next year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, uh, rocket launch. Yeah. <laughs> rocket launch. Tower Street. Yes. <laughs> rocket launch tomorrow. Yeah. Mm, yeah it just doesn't end. Thank you all again. <laughs>